Hi everybody, I'm here with Matthew Gaughan at Blackpool Matt's Wine Club. We are here to taste through the June. It's June, it's June. already. Yeah. Oh, taste through the June wines. Um, and they're all white and they're all from France. Well, two of them are white. As you can see, one of them oh, is yeah. pink in shade. So therefore it's a rosé. Details, details. <laughs> but it is all about the summer. And I thought we'd have a little French theme as well. Great. And we're in an unusual location because we're in, um, where are we? We're in New Almaden, which is in Santa Clara County. So south of San Jose. Southwest of San Jose. And it's really, really beautiful here. We just went to a winery to do a tasting that um, Ella is representing. Yes, we were at Alamitos Vineyards. Yeah, so there might be a picture of me on Instagram uh, having some wine there. And it's really, really beautiful. And I don't know if you can tell here, but we're in the mountains, um, really green, uh, not too far from the ocean quite near Gilroy, I think, which yeah. is famous for its garlics. Though I've still never had any That's garlic funny. wine and I really, really don't want to. And apparently we just learned that they're, they're, oh, they're <laughs> 50 feet under the elevation to be considered Santa Cruz Mountains. So they're sort of in this like in between of Santa Cruz Mountains and um, Santa Clara County wines. Um, yeah, and we've, we were just discussing how this is an area that has, it has a long history of winemaking and grape growing going back to uh, the 1850s. But now it's sadly more built up with a Silicon Valley nearby. Um, so there's not that many wineries here, but the ones that are here actually make very, very good wine. Yeah, there's a ton of open space out here and I think a lot of people forget about it. They go to Marin always and there's just amazing hills that are yeah. untouched with hiking hiking routes and, and little tiny wineries tucked away. But it's definitely a place to visit. Yeah, and we're in a, a, a Quicksilver Park. So this used to be mining country as well. Uh, so it does look like there's some very nice trails around us. Yes. But we're not here to talk about uh, <laughs> California uh, agriculture and geography. We're here to talk about French wine. And we're going to start off with our rosé, which excitingly is in a one litre bottle. Very so, exciting. And it fits into all of your guys' shipments. Yeah, so a lot of you have got it uh, this month. So I think it's perfect for the warm weather. It's a perfect um, picnic wine or a perfect beach wine. And because it's a litre, it's going to last that little bit longer. Yes. So a perfect party wine too. And it is from, I think you'll dive into the story a little bit, but it's from Martins. They've, well, you just start, just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Martins is an importer based um, here in California since 1979. And they have this really fun project, which they've started uh, called License 4. And so it's, um, it's a wine that they're, they're distributing under their own label. But it's made by winemakers who they work with and have worked with for a long time. And so license four is the license that every bar, restaurant, cafe, bistro in France has to have on the wall to show that they're allowed to serve alcohol. So that's the, uh, the label that they've used. I think it's a pretty uh, eye-catching label, memorable yeah. story, and very good value because it's $20 for a litre of rosé. Yes, very James Bond-esque in its design. Mm, yeah. And so um, it's made by a producer from Provence who makes very good rosé in their own right, but then it's bottled under this different label. And though that sounds a bit generic, they put a lot of work into getting using really good producer and making really good wine as well. And it's 80% Grenache and 20% Merlot. It's very easy drinking. And I, there has been a problem with rosé because of all the tariffs and all the um, blocked up imports. There's a lot of containers at sea. Um, I think someone told me they had 40 different containers they're waiting for, which are just at sea. And because of this big backup, it's been difficult to get the wines into the country and then to distribute them. So usually the rosé is available in March or early April, but now they've only just been coming in May, and even just now in June. And we need our rosé. We do. Because it's summertime. So did this just come in? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, exciting. Yeah, so I was excited to taste it. Uh, tasted a few other rosés as well as they begin to trickle in and this has been my favorite so far because it's just so easy to drink but it's not um, dilute it's not just water there's a bit more fruit and substance to it so very very refreshing yes i agree and is there anything that would come to mind that you would pair or pair it with i think actually on the text sheet you said don't pair it with anything just drink it so this is just That's your exactly leader to I drink said. by yourself yeah i think you can have it with salads uh, with snacks with seafood, with fish, but you don't always have to have food with wine. So true. And so it's a summer afternoon, you're by the pool, at the beach, having a picnic, just open it up and drink it and enjoy it. Great. 
just like we're doing now. It's a sunny day, we're in the countryside. Let's just imagine that we've been walking for two or three hours <laughs> and need a refreshing drink. And haven't just been wine tasting down yeah. the road. <laughs> this would be the bottle I'd open and just sip on it and enjoy it. Yep, I agree. Next we have the Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, we do. And this is a very unusual wine. And I was quite excited to try it. And I was really, really impressed when I did try it. So it's from the Loire Valley, but it's from the very unusual appellation, Coteau de Gienois, which is just north of Sancerre and Puy Fume, which are much more famous appellations for Sauvignon Blanc. There's only 150 hectares planted. It's on the banks of the River, river Loire. And as it's very near to Sancerre and, and uh, Puy Fume, it produces pretty similar styles, but are much more um, attractive prices. And it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, and it has to be if it's white. There's also Pinot Noir and Gamay planted in Coteau de Gienois, but if it's white, then it's Sauvignon Blanc. So it's just in that network of appellations in central Loire Valley, Sancerre, Puy Fume, Menetou Salon. I also have a wine from Cancy, which um, is an historic appellation for Sauvignon Blanc just south of uh, Sancerre. And then there's Coteau de Gienois. There's lots and lots of appellations in the Loire Valley. And one trick uh, that I may have mentioned before, if you want to find a really good value but high quality wine, look for a famous appellation and then look for what's next to it. Uh, so the region next to it may not have the same highest quality, but it's still going to be very good quality at much more affordable prices and very similar style. Does that work for somewhere in the United States? Like, does that work for California? If I were to say Napa Valley, what would you say? Sonoma. <laughs> if I were to say Sonoma, what would you say? Um, Mendocino. There you go. Yeah. And that's why um, a lot of Napa wineries are actually planting in, in Mendocino, uh, because it's cheaper and they can make um, good wine at Old Lake County as well. Yeah. The and Matthew actually just posted a Sauvignon Blanc blog, and I, I think did. this one was featured in it. Yeah. Kind of like bringing you back to why Sauvignon Blanc is great, why it's world renowned. Yes, because um, as I mentioned in the blog, I've often been dismissive of Sauvignon Blanc as being too obvious, and you get that New Zealand style, which is very pungent. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. And there are actually, when you consider Sauvignon Blanc, there are so many different styles of wine. There's the New Zealand style, there's the Loire style, there's sweet wine made from Sauvignon Blanc, there's the Sauvignon Blanc made here, made in Chile, made in South Africa, and good producers do make very good wine from Sauvignon Blanc. So it doesn't have, it's not as conducive to um, oak as uh, Chardonnay is, because it's, it's not as neutral as Chardonnay. So it's not always considered to be the highest quality and not to be as age-worthy. And it should generally be dr drunk young, but it can have, it has the acidity and the structure to age when it's made by good producers who limit the yield, who limit the vigor, and um, just let the grape express itself. Yeah. And we actually just had two Sauvignon Blancs just down the road, and it was pretty shocking to see the difference between the two vintages and just because yeast. One was very much yeah, more passion fruity, mm -hmm. Yes, that's the thing with Sauvignon Blanc Topical. is um, skin contact is what gives the um, those phenolics, but also the type of yeast that's used. And certain yeasts really draw out those phenolics. So having so some winemakers will use native yeasts, which is a slower fermentation and doesn't uh, draw out the phenolics as much. That might be a more um, subdued and um, classical style. And then others will use uh, cultured yeast to really draw out those phenolics and make it maybe into a more pungent aromatic style. So again, a lot of um, things going on in the vineyard and in the winery, which can really change the style of Sauvignon Blanc. And that was kind of an interesting point in your blog too about the Sauvignon Blanc, where they became kind of that like grassy bell peppery is because it, they were farmed so far away from where the winery was. It just, they had so much extended skin contact because of the distance. And now as things are shortening up, we've all kind of gotten used to that flavor, but it's easier to get your your grapes to your winery in shorter times. Yes, but then you would leave the grapes in contact with the skins to replicate that style that developed right. in New Zealand. Right. So some Loire winemakers will um, use skin contact, yes. maybe 24 hours, to draw out those phenolics. Uh, others will refuse to use any skin contact whatsoever because they feel that's kind of uh, almost polluting or corrupting the purity of the grape variety to use some pretentious wine speak. I, I, do you do you think this one has skin contact? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I really like this wine because it's really, really refi refined and restrained. It has the Sauvignon Blanc aromatics, but they're not overly aggressive. And um, it's just a really, really tasty wine. Yeah, it is. But it's a really nice structure to it as well. It's quietly sophisticated. Beautiful. 
Um, anything that would come to mind when pairing this? Something with goat's cheese in it, for mm. sure. So a goat's cheese salad or a goat's cheese tart. The Loire Valley is famous for its goat's cheese. And I'm getting hungry. That just, just thinking about amazing. it. And Sauvignon Blanc has that crisp acidity which pairs well with the, the gentle richness of the goat's cheese uh, dish or goat's cheese on its own. Amazing. Yeah. And I think this wine really brings home to me that Sauvignon Blanc can be really good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the wine where it's just like, oh yeah, I've actually tasted some really good Sauvignon Blancs recently. And this one just confirms that in the right hands, it makes very good wine. So this is, again, a wine that's in a lot of people's shipments, mixtape or uh, white light, white heat. And it will be per perfect for the summer again. I think you could easily drink it on its own or yeah. have it um, with some kind of goat's cheese salad. Yep. Or even fish. Loire Valley is the region that I love the most in France, I think, because oh, nice. of the food and the wine. And they make red wine. Yep. And they, you said it was the Pinot and the Gamay. Yeah, the Pinot Noir, Gamay, um, also Cabernet Franc as well, nice. Loire Valley. It's just also childhood memories. It's the first French region I visited when I was nine or ten years old and just had an amazing time. It was just so idyllic. And what's great about Loire Valley, and now I can associate it with grape growing and winemaking, coming from the north of England, we'd drive down and it would get vaguely sunnier, vaguely warmer and then get the ferry to uh, Normandy. You know, it's kind of the same as the south of England. Same soil, same weather, they make cider. And then you hit the Loire Valley and everything changes. Really? The sunshine, the warmth, the beauty. You're just like, now I'm in France. And this is called the, uh, Loire Valley is called the Garden of France and for a reason. Interesting. Yeah. Were you tasting wine there when you were nine? Uh, my mother and father were, yes. They drug your wine. <laughs> Yes, we went to the same restaurant every night. I'm very particular about that kind of... To the same restaurant? Yeah, in uh, the town of Loche. <laughs> Better have been good. Yeah, it was. And the one night it was closed, I was devastated. <laughs> yeah, but really delicious. Yes, very good. Do you like it? I do. And third, we have got a Viognier. All these corks are so different. Yeah. So Viognier is a grape variety which I generally do not like, so the, <laughs> the recurrent theme And he theme says here. he doesn't have any biases in the wine world. Yeah. Viognier is a very difficult grape variety to work with because um, it needs to get it fully ripe, it needs that warm climate, but it loses acidity and it can gain too much alcohol. So I used to work at a winery in Napa, which will remain unnamed. Their Viognier had higher alcohol than Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh my god. Um, it's 14.8. I mean, it was a good wine, but it's just really difficult to get that balance. So to maintain the freshness, the acidity, to balance the weight of the wine. But this wine, I think, has that balance. This wine is imported by uh, Pierre Clot Imports, which is a really small importer. Um, you met Paul. I did. A really nice He's French guy. He's a beekeeper. Guy. He's a beekeeper, that's true. In the East Bay. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, He's from Maconnet, from the village of uh, Pierre Clos. That's why it's called the Pierre Clos Imports. And he basically imports wines that his friends make. He went to school in um, Burgundy, in the Maconnet, and met a lot of cool people who were all from winemaking backgrounds. And this is one of his friends, Martin Clerc, um, who's based in um, Northern Rome. And so this appellation is Colline Rohidienne, which is an all-encompassing appellation covering the Northern Rome. So Northern Rome's famous for Cote Roti, Condria, uh, Hermitage, uh, um, Cornas, Saint Joseph, etc. etc. Those wines can be very expensive. And so what a lot of winemakers are doing is sourcing grapes from just outside those um, prestigious appellations to make an introductory entry-level wine at a much more affordable price. And some of those wines I've, I've found are actually very good, especially those which are exported, because maybe locally those wines can be a little more basic. But once they're exported to places like the US, there has to be a quality to, in order to sell the wines. And this is a really great example of introductory style of Viognier. Condria of this um, quality could be $50 to $60. This is in the 20s. So really, really good price. In fact, it's, it's, I think it's even $20. And funny enough, that's kind of what you were talking about with here. Was you find the great region and then you go mm -hmm. a little bit outside of it. And then you find the best quality where quality meets... Um, Price. Yeah, exactly. So value sometimes can be interpreted as cheap, but that's not true. Value is a, is a wine which um, hits the 
right level of quality at the right price point, or even lower than the, than you think you should be spending. So if you're thinking you get a 40 to 50, 60 dollar wine, and this one's only 20, that's really good value. Some people might think 20 dollars is too expensive, but this is um, for what it is. Absolutely, it's the price point. That is such an interesting wine. It's got like you're almost like you're gonna hate me for saying this, but like tasting perfume at the end of it, like it's. Well, that's Fionnier. It's aromatic. Mm -hmm. It's grapey. It's you floral. Really taste the aromatics, though. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You really taste the fruit mm -hmm. um, and the flowers. Mm -hmm. It's like um, almost it's like um, like rose water or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you really almost taste those rose petals. Um, it's very pretty, and it has that richness, but it's not too rich. No. It's balanced by the acidity. It says 14.5%. We've had this discussion before. This is because of the, um, the tariffs. Everything's all about tariffs. Every, everything goes back to that, whether it's importing rosé or the level of alcohol on the back label. Uh, but this is not 14.5%. Okay. I, I think it's a little bit lower than that. Yeah. It does still, it, it feels more alcoholic-y than the other two. Absolutely. But it doesn't feel out of balance. Yeah, and Viognier is going to have a full body, higher alcohol. But as I say, all important that the acidity balances that richness, which yes. I think this wine does at a very good price. <laughs> this wine's a lot of fun. And because it's a different style from the Sauvignon Blanc, it's going to pair with richer foods. And that's kind of, uh, again, going into the geography of France, the food pairings and the wine pairings change according to the geography. As it gets warmer, the food often gets richer. And so going to the Northern Rhone, having more um, game or more meat, this, would, this wouldn't go with game, but it would certainly go with um, a richer, creamier white meat sauce or a white fish sauce. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has all that richness and freshness that I want from a good Viognier. I mean, if I don't always go to Viognier, that's fine. I agree. I think all three of these are great, uh, great wines, great summer wines, great chilled wines. Yeah, and it shows that you can drink a diverse style of wine in summer as long as it's refreshing. So cheers to that. Cheers.